We've all had images that need some form of color correction done to them. Uh, this particular image comes from a house in Sisney, Illinois. It sits right at a corner, very old house, and I thought it would be very neat to take a picture of it. But as you can see in this particular image, we have a bluish uh, color invading the entire photograph. It's referred to as a color cast. So we're going to take care of that. And we're also going to get rid of this telephone box right here. Uh, because I, th I think you'll agree that this kind of takes away from the overall old effect. Even though this is an old um, telephone box, it still is distracting. So we're going to take that out any mending of the bricks we want to do we can also do but let's let's concentrate first on getting rid of this blue color cast so the first thing we can do uh, or need to do is find the white and black point in the image uh, when you use a camera the camera is usually looking for what's called middle gray a good example of, of how middle gray comes into play is if you go out and photograph um, when it snows. If you just go by what the camera tells you, it uh, floods the meter with white, obviously, snow being white. And the camera is looking for middle gray. Well, it can't find it in a snow image. So what it does is stop down or... Uh, give you a metered version of what it thinks is right concerning middle gray and it turns your snow into a muddy darkened image and I'm sure most of you have experienced that to photograph snow effectively you basically have to lie to your metering system and expose your image uh, at least one stop brighter if not two stops I kind of go between the two. I go uh, some t some images I use one, some images I compensate by using a plus two. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, one of these days you may have to do that. But in this image, we kind of have the same effect. The 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 uh, image has got a cast to it, and it darkens the image a little bit because of that blue. Uh, color cast so we need to take it out if we go up to image adjustments and go down to threshold this basically turns your image into a black slash white image there is no gray now this is handy for finding the white and black point if you look at the image you can easily tell well this is going to be gray uh, because you know we can tell it's concrete uh, this is going to be white because that post obviously at some point was painted white uh, back in here is black because it's dark inside We've got a black crack at the bottom of the windowsill We've got a black area over here but the easiest way to tell wh which is the real white and real black is by going to image adjustments and threshold. If we take this slider and move it all the way to the right, it gives us our white point. So you can see there is some white up in that uh, concrete, but the majority of the white is in this post. Now what we need to do, I'm going to hold down my control key and press the space bar and make that click on that a couple of times to make it bigger because I want to click right on an area that is white. I don't want to click on a black speck inadvertently. So I'll click right there. And what I want to do is hold down my shift key when I click, and that drops what we call a target. All right, now we need to go the opposite direction. So we grab this slider and we go this way. We want to find the very last areas of black in the image and I've made this smaller so let me do a control minus so in the window appears to be a great place to find that black 
So let me control space bar, hold both those down and click with my mouse. And I'm going to just do, you know, cut this. Yep, that's definitely a good area. So I'm going to shift click right there. Now, you don't want to click OK because we don't, you know, we're not really using threshold for anything else. We want to cancel that. Now, it goes away, but only temporarily. Let me go Control minus to make the image smaller. Control zero will fill the area with my image. Control minus makes it smaller. Control plus makes it bigger. Control minus making it smaller. All right, I'm going to get this little log, uh, panel out of the way. And I'm going to do a um, levels adjustment. Now, there's a level adjustment right up here, right there. But we're not going to use this level adjustment. We're going to do a control, hold down the control key, and press the letter L. That brings up this particular dialog. Now, I don't want this to show over here. I want to see this. And I inadvertently created a, by clicking this icon, I created this layer. So I'm going to throw that in the trash. We don't need that. All right. Now I'm going to do the Control L again for levels. And now you see this is the box that uh, shows us on the left side are all the blacks that are in the image and on the right side are the whites so if I take this towards the left side you can see this is all the dark area light area alright what I'm wanting to do if you notice now that I have levels up let me move that a little bit our targets came up here's the left target or the light target and here's the black target. So that corresponds with these eyedroppers. So I'm going to use the white eyedropper, the rightmost eyedropper, go over here to this one, because that's our white area, and I'm going to click right on that dot inside that. I can better do that if I multiply the size or zoom in. And I did that with control space and held down the mouse and drug. So I'm going to just click right in that circle. So now I have the white point set. I'm going to hold down my space bar and travel over here to where my black target is. Now I want my black eyedropper. Click right here in the center of that. And now I have my black and white set. I'm going to click OK because I don't know where my middle gray should be yet. Click OK. Now, I'm going to do a control zero to fill my screen. The blue cast is still there because we do need to find middle gray and take care of that. So, what we're going to do now is hold down the control key and hit the letter M as in motel. And that will bring up a different dialog box. I need to point out you can also go up to image adjustments and curves or control M. You notice that uh, layers or levels is also here image adjustments levels which we just did and curves they're both there I just like to use the uh, control keys because it makes things a lot faster. Alright we know that some of this is going to be gray and we know some of this over here is going to be gray. There's got to be some gray in this post as well, but more noticeably over here where the shadow is. All we have to do is move our mouse outside of this panel, and you'll if you click, you see a dot appear. So as we move this in the image, you see where the dot falls all over the image. Right in there is a middle gray. Over here, we're going to find lots of grays. So this looks like the best place to do it. 
notice we are trying to get this circle to land right there, right in the middle. So here's here's the area that, it, yep, right in there. So I'm going to hold down my control space bar, and I'm going to make that area right in there huge. So let's let's look again. Let me move that around because it's got to be dead center. And there it is. So let's make it even bigger. Click here. That's where it is. So we hold down the shift key again and click. That drops our target right there on middle gray. Now all we have to do, let's zoom back out. Control minus or control zero to fill the screen. Now all we have to do is take our middle gray eyedropper and click it right in the center of that dot. Now I gotta hit that exact dot or I just really messed that up. So let me zoom in again. And it looks like that that's the who I'm sorry. That's the dot. Uh, let's uh, reset that. If you hold down the Alt key and click, it turns into a reset right there. We don't want that. Uh, that's the wrong dot. So I'm going to move over in my image. And we should have a dot over there. Let me go back up to Image, Adjustments, and Curves. And I'm looking for the other dot we set, or the other target. There it is. So let me zoom in there. Way in. Move that over a little bit. I'm holding down the space bar and left clicking with my mouse to move that around. So I'm going to zoom some more. Control, space bar, click. And there's that dot. So middle gray eyedropper. Click on the middle gray dot. Wow, that made a big difference, didn't it? Let's go back and look and see what we've got. We'll hide this, do a control zero, and that's the way our image should look. So let's look in the history. This is the way the image was. Let me make that smaller. That's the way it was, and that's the way it is now. And we'll just get that back up here. So all the difference in the world, getting rid of a color cast. So that's the first thing that you should do to an image. Uh, if this is something you really care about, you want the, the contrast to be perfect. So you want to find your black point, your white point, and middle gray. There are several steps to this, obviously, but they make all the difference in the world in your image. There are occasions we're simply doing the white and black point will get rid of the color cast. You just have to eyeball it to see is this where it should be. If not, you certainly need to go that extra step, find middle gray, and zap that. So we have our image fixed up for middle gray at this point. So we've set the white point, the black point, middle gray, our color correction is now perfect. We need to move on to addressing other issues. Now, if this were a, a new home, which is clearly not, there are several things that we would want to concentrate on, obviously. But this is an old image, so it, uh, we just need to make some more basic changes with it. Uh, and those can be a little tricky if you don't know the tools. We have lots of tools in Photoshop to use to fix things like this telephone drop. And right over here, if you look in the um, tool palette, it defaults to this one. That's the little band-aid looking thing. That's the spot healing brush tool. Then you have the healing brush, patch, uh, content aware move, and obviously this picture doesn't need red eye removal. That's something we reserve for people. All right. So let's experiment with this, the spot healing tool. 
Now I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hold down my control key space bar and I'm going to go up here and tackle uh, this part first. So I'm going to just click up here and drag and that does that pretty good. And if I just click right now and, and drag this and let go, you see what it's capable of. Now that's not always the best scenario because if you look right here in this particular area you can see that it brought some of this brick and pasted it in where the mortar is and we really don't want that. So to undo that we just do a control Z as in zebra and the next tool that we might want to consider same place just click and hold that down is the healing brush tool now this one and let me make my brush smaller this this brush here is based on the brush sets that are right up here if you click on that you'll see there's the size and the hardness the hardness is all the way up and normally we want the hardness at zero it means that the brush is now soft uh, 19 that's fine we can control that very easily with the left and right bracket key which are located next to the letter P on the keyboard P is in Papa so we're going to um, we can also click right here on this little now let's go to the paintbrush and click right here you see this is where our brushes are located so using the the um, spot healing or the healing brush in this case it doesn't let you see all the brush heads the brush sizes and so forth it just shows you this but that's all we need alright let's go over here and now we need to do something a little bit differently I'm gonna left bracket key to make my br uh, brush size smaller I'm going to hold down my alt key on my keyboard if you're using a Macintosh that would be your option key click here then you come up here and notice we see a preview in that brush now no matter where I move it you see the preview of where we sampled right over here so I want to line that up with the other area and I paint and let go it adjusts for light and shadows now the problem is that because that was close to the edge of the frame and we're dealing with something that's black it smeared it so in this particular instance all of these tools are probably going to smear so let's do a control Z to undo that and our great backup tool is right here this is the clone stamp and click on it we want the very top one we're gonna make that a little bit smaller again hold down the alt key it looks the same we click there click on alt and click there or option on a Mac come over here line that up click and drag now the problem is when you use the clone tool it doesn't adjust for light and shadow notice it's exactly the same is what we sampled from so you really have to be careful when you use the rubber stamp tool because you could change how the image looks all together so let's try it from this side where it's darker I'm holding down the alt key Macintosh remember that's the option key and I fix that now we have a re, uh, repeat of this area right here right here so I, what I'm going to do is click in the middle and then click there and then you can kind of click back like that to fill that in so you don't see that pattern up here now I'm going to click and just click up here with the alt key or option key on a Mac fill that in I don't want those little dots to be repeated so I sample again and click go down here line that up click and drag now I don't have to do any more than that because the rest of that's not connected uh, 
to the top. I still need to fix this piece right here. So I'm going to do that by alt clicking right here, right in the middle. Go right over here where that mortar should be. Click and drag. And kind of drag to each side a little bit. And go over here and fix that brick a little bit. And we're good. Now notice it looks so much like that mortar. Again, you might want to click and drag and click it up there. So they don't look exactly the same. It really jumps out in an image if you clone from one place and you get repetition build up it really jumps off the screen. So now we can go back over here to the other tools, the spot healing brush, and see what it does. We're, we're using the click and hold, the top one right there. Doesn't do bad. But again, we filled this mortar and filling more mortar, so control Z. Now I can only go back one step with control Z. Z is in zebra. So I need to hold down the control alt z to go back multiple steps. So here we are. Or on a Macintosh it would be command all, uh, option. Command option. Alright. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to get the healing brush tool. I'm going to go over here and alt click right in here because I want to fix this right there so I'm going to click here with the option key or alt key on a PC click right here line that up nicely and let go and I'm going to come right here again click and drag it down and let's just keep dragging and see what it does let go there's a little bit of darker stuff in there so I'm just going to go over a little bit and that fixes that. Inside the the, the uh, brick, we don't have to worry about it near as much. Just kind of clean that up. Don't want that to repeat. Clone some over there. All right, so you see how we can get rid of some of this stuff. Let's try right here. Again, a little dark. We'll just clone some from there, and that helps a great deal. I'm going to get some right here. And that did a nice job. Go back to the mortar again by alt-clicking or option on a Mac. Just go right on down. Nice job. Let's click right here with the alt key line it up, option key on a Mac again, fix that. So you can see how powerful this tool is once we get those edges taken care of because it just doesn't like edges. It just will smear stuff sometimes very badly when we're working on some of those things. And if you get a smear and it just doesn't want to clean itself up Switch over to that rubber stamp tool, click, and you can fill it with something good. Uh, get over here, you can kind of fix that. There's nothing wrong with the um, rubber stamp tool. It's just that it doesn't figure in the light and shadow issues for you at all. So I'm going to use the rubber stamp again. I'm going to alt-click. Again, that's option click on a Mac and go over here, click from this side, click from here, up and down. I think you're getting the idea of how to get rid of that, so go ahead and take care of, of the rest of this. And a lot of that you can get rid of very, very quickly, and I'm going to show you how. I'm going to go down here uh, where these connect, and I'm going to use, I, I want to just do a quick clone job here. Uh, still have the rubber stamp down. I'm going to click here with the target, the Alt click key down, left click. That's the Option key on a Mac. 
click right here and just go up clean that up a little bit from that side now I'm going to zoom back out control minus and I'm gonna to try to fix this whole thing in one whack if it does it great if it doesn't we'll do something different so we go up here again where the band-aid is and this time I'm going to do a patch tool now the patch tool allows us to do some amazing stuff what we need to do is make a circle around this and this this is great at making circles as you see I'm going to control D to turn those off and by the way uh, you're going to hear this a lot during the semester uh, these are what's called marching ants uh, that's how we make selections it's an animation of dots black and white dots to show that you've made a selection so what I need to do I'll start right here go down make it as close to your item that you want to get rid of as possible make that turn and then just let go it'll snap to the other end nice so now all I have to do is click inside of this drag it over here to the side and you can see in the preview right here that it's already cleaned that so all we have to do at this point is I line it up kind of have the you know the same uh, alignment with the bricks and then I just let go and click again and that stuff is gone well, let me just show you in the history this is where we were and that's where we are now so not bad alright let's go down here and now we could do the same thing with this let's let's see what happens make a selection around this line these bricks up and there you go it's an amazing tool uh, photo restoration artists used to spend hours and hours doing this this type of work and now it can be done in a very short time I'm going to show you one other little trick we're going to use the spot healing tool again and this time I'm going to make the brush just a little bit bigger by right clicking on the uh, or clicking on the right bracket tool up there next to the P and this time I'm just going to simply click once and come down here hold my shift key down and click again it draws a straight line and zaps everything out at one time let me undo that. Control Z. I'm going to show you again. I'm just going to click once right here, come down here, hold down the shift key, and click with my left mouse button one time. It drew the line and zapped everything for me. Had that have been something black, it probably would have smeared. I can do the same thing here, but I think you might see odd results right here. Let's just click come down here and shift click looks pretty good little place right in there so control zero shows us our entire image again and I think we've done a great deal of good by uh, the tools that we have now there seems to be kind of a line right here that could be kind of a an eye catcher uh, the eyes are normally drawn to something white when we first look into an image but I think this shows us a pattern let's just go back to the original image here and I think you see uh, what we're dealing with so let's go all the way back here uh, I think we can take care of this pretty easily go back over here to that patch tool and we just click right here and let go and I think that did a pretty good job with that line let's go back one step there it was there it is now so I think that looks a lot better uh, it, you know there's a lot of occasions where, where we can use that patch tool 
Uh, and if it doesn't work for you, jump over to one of the other tools. We definitely have some great tools in Photoshop. Another way to repair damage is simply making a copy. Now this is the layers palette over here and right now we only have one layer. But in Photoshop we can have lots of layers at the same time and we're fixing to put another layer over here. What I'm going to do is basically make an area selection of our problem area. So I'm going to take this particular tool this is called the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to click a selection start down here and I'm just going to click and drag this up and it shows us you know the marching ants that's our selected area I'll move that over just a little bit now I want to take this and move it over here to the good area and I'm going to create a new layer and copy this at the same time. To do that, now that I have this selection, you see the marching ants moving. This is the area that now is selected. I'm just going to hold down my control key and press the letter J. J is in jump. Now you notice over here in the layers palette, I have two layers. Here's what I just copied. Here's what I had. Now, I should have made that area actually bigger uh, because I didn't leave myself a lot of playroom. So let me undo that real quickly. I'm going to throw that away. And I'm going to make another area here. Just click and drag something like that. I'm going to move it over here. Just wanted to make sure I had it lined up. In the, you know, I could have just started over here and click a nice big area and do a control J so now we have a bigger area of bricks selected I'm going to use my move tool which is up here at the top where I can press the letter V as in victory hold down my shift key which means it's going to keep the uh, this moving on the horizontal and I can just let go once I'm right over the top of that all right, now to to bring it back in here to where it looks a little bit better. Yeah, I got rid of our our box underneath, but it certainly doesn't look real, does it? So here's what we do. Over here in the layers palette, this is the erase tool. So we click on that, and we want to use a little bit bigger brush. But notice now we see our brushes. We want something that's big and soft and fuzzy on the edges and that's right here so let's make it bigger right bracket key makes it bigger and and then we just start erasing and I would really bring this opacity down because we just want to blend this into the other layer that's there and we're starting to see the phone line come back let's keep brushing and if we press <clears throat> we've got to actually undo that because here's what happens when we erase something it's gone permanently and that's not good we want you know if we make a mistake we want to be able to undo it right so I'm gonna throw that away again I'll make the selection again and control J mm -hmm move tool I can move it around if I want to but if I hold shift it's gonna snap back in exactly where I grabbed it from and you notice this is lined up that mortar is so now instead of using the erase tool I'm gonna to use what's called a quick mask we have to have this layer selected and then right here is the quick mask icon just click it it's the one with looks like a square donut and it puts this box next to it now everything in Photoshop in the layers palette depends on what's on top what's on top shows above everything else so if I had four or five layers here and one's a clown and one's a building and so forth 
everything's going to be on top of this building and in a, this building won't show if we have too many things covering it up but in this case it's just a little old thin block so it's it's not covering the whole image but it is on top so it shows so we're going to let the layer underneath show through a little bit by using this box so we need black over here it's defaulted to black and white if yours doesn't show black and white hit the letter D as in dog on your computer and the default colors will come up if it if it's white on top all you have to do is press the letter X X toggles the foreground and background color and we're just going to paint with our paintbrush I'm going to make it go up here and get a soft brush make it big bigger than that that's good enough and now I want to change the opacity down pretty low and now as I paint and if I go too far and I get that wire all I have to do is change the color to white press X if you want to and now if I paint white it, it brings the other back again press X and I make some of that other stuff go away paint over here and you probably can hear my mouse clacking as I do this it's letting the other layer let's change that it's really low change that a little bit so we can see where we're going you're going to be very hard pressed to see any mistakes again if I go like this the other layer showing through so I press X which lets white show and we're covering back up again now if you look over here what's taking place and let me make that bigger so you can see it you can see me where I'm painting is letting show through so if I go over here and paint right down through the middle of this well I'm painting with white let me control Z that press the letter X now if I do this I'm pretty well bringing it all back in if you look over there and see alright so let me press the white again so we're painting with white and we're just making that wire go away now we're getting a we're seeing the edges here which isn't cool so let me press X to paint with black and so these square edges will go away and there you have it there's another way to take care of problems in the image so if we turn the eyeball off here again it's all controlled by this mask what shows what doesn't show I'm getting too close and letting the wire come back so paint with white again make it go away alright I think that covers everything we need to cover for this particular project um, you need to do some practicing with this image and see how well you can do uh, on this same image that I did try your skills out.